the View My Sports Studios, it's The Breakdown with your hosts, Roger Tillis and Chuck Olesker. Today is guest on The Breakdown. He's the head basketball coach for Nice High School out of Ponte Vedra, Florida, and the state's under-19 AAU team. Welcome, Scott Cooper. All right, here we are, another edition of The Breakdown. Thanks for joining us today. My name's Roger Tillis. We're here in the studio with Chuck Olesker, our co-host and engineer. And our special guest today, we have got Coach Scott Cooper from Nice High School in Ponte Vedra, Florida, head basketball coach, also the coach of the under-19 AAU team in the state of Florida. Scott, thank you for coming by our View My Sports studios and hanging out thank with us. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's, I tell you, we were very excited to um, have you come to the show and do this with us and share your time. I know you are extremely busy. Uh, of course, basketball season's over, but it's never really over. Not when you get no. to the level that, that that you're at. I mean, tell us a little bit about that. How busy have you been? It's it's nonstop. Uh, I mean, as soon as the season o is over, the next day the kids are wanting to get in the weight room. AAU season starts. Um, so the teaching duties, you have everything thrown in there. So it's uh, you get about a two days to take a deep breath, and then you're, <laughs> and then you're right back in it. You know, you, you talk about you know the kids and whatnot. Now, here's the thing, and and, and you're not alone in this, obviously. There's a lot of, of coaches out there that are in the same situation. But it's something that we should bring up. The fact is, you are a teacher. You are a parent. Um, you're coaching two basketball programs and really doing a lot more than that when it comes to camps and whatnot. Right. How do you find the time? It's, uh, it's all about having a great support system, uh, having a great wife that you know, will stay home with the kids and, and, and do what she needs to do and and help me out, uh, having grandparents that are around that will help watch the kids when, when my wife is busy. So if you, if you don't have a good support system, you can't do it. You know, sure. it's, not, it's not a job for somebody that, uh, that does not have a good support system. Sure, sure. And, and you don't just have, like, one kid. You've no. got several. I have an 18-year-old, a 4-year-old, and a 2-year-old. Yikes. So I have, Gracious. I have uh, across the board. Two yeah, more, two, you got a team, two, man. Three yeah, more, yeah. I got a team. <laughs> well, right. Get my, busy. My wife wants the girl, though, so I can't. I got to stop. We well, got three it's boys. A co, it's a co-ed league. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Every team needs a cheerleader. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I'm going to probably get in trouble <laughs> for that. That's right. What do you mean? What, just because she's a girl, she can't play basketball? That's right. Steffi's going to come Steffi's back. Steffi's going to be back. I'm in yeah. trouble. Sorry, Steffi. <laughs> Steffi Sorensen, a, a prior guest, uh, and That's she right. was no slouch on the basketball court if Not you know anything all. about her. Well, I tell you what, we, we've got a, a great agenda for our show today. We are going to be getting into recruiting information. We're going to be getting into uh, some of the do's and don'ts, uh, the trials and tribulations, the problems, you name it. And this is not going to be just for your high school basketball players. This is also helpful information, whether you're running track, whether you're swinging a golf club, you know, playing football. Some of what we're going to talk about today is going to be extremely useful. So pay attention, or as they say, pay dearly. Believe me. Now, Scott, you yourself were obviously a high school player. You mm -hmm. played collegiately as well. You know, we talk about how technology has affected recruiting in general and how things have changed. I mean, you know, what you've seen from the time when you were out there playing and, and being recruited and whatnot, you know, talk about that. What, what have you seen as far as the changes go, I mean, good or bad? It's night and day. I mean, uh, when I was playing, you know, a coach would come see you play on a Friday night or whatnot, a college coach, uh, and recruit you that way. There wasn't really a lot of AAU. There was AAU going on, but it was like Florida had one team. Uh, right. Michigan had a team. So there were just the best of the best played on the AAU teams. Mm -hmm. um, so there was no technology to send out. I mean, if you wanted to, to be recruited by a coach, you had to get, a, get on the phone call and say, Coach, come, come see me play, basically. Uh, it's a whole other world today. I mean, a whole, whole other world with, with AAU, with technology. So much has come into play now that, I mean, the way I was recruited, has nobody does that anymore. <laughs> nobody. <laughs> it's a lost art. It is. It, it really know? is. Well, you yeah. know, it, it, it's funny um, with the technology, and, and you hear everything, technology, technology, you know, tweets and Facebook and social media and all of that. But what we have found, when all the smoke from that clears, it still comes down to a lot of the fundamentals. You still have to communicate to the coach. You oh, still yeah. have to make that first impression. Build relationships. Sure. Yeah. And, and, that, and, and now let me ask you, and, and I'm, I'm curious again, back when 
in your day. I hope you can remember that far back. <laughs> How was the the whole offer structure? I mean, now it's the hoopla, and you got to get on TV, and the news is in your face. I mean, think back when you were in high school. How did your offers go? I mean, it was I mean, it was nothing like that. It was a phone call, co- uh, uh, Scott. We want you to come to school here. You know, we'd love to have you, and they mail you a letter. You know, if you sent that letter back, then you're going to school there. So, you know, when I signed, I was in a a, a, a tiny little office uh, with my coach there. He handed me the letter that he got from the coach. I signed my name and. You know, that was it. No so, cameras, I mean, was, no, no ESPN. No, no cameras, no, no wow. ESPN. You got the shaft. <laughs> Nothing. I feel bad. I know. I feel bad. I'm sorry, I don't blame man. my coach for that. I think. <laughs> That's right. Now, now uh, from an mm-hmm. offer perspective, um, now, now you play, where did you play collegiately? I played uh, Tallahassee Community College, mm-hmm. and then I mm-hmm. went to Palm Beach Atlantic University. Nice. So, uh, nice. two years at Tallahassee and then two years down at West Palm Beach. Did you – get highly recruited i mean were you shopped about a little well, bit or you know uh, to be honest with you i was you know i was highly recruited but i didn't get it done in a classroom like i should have uh-huh. you know uh-huh. i didn't i didn't i didn't flunk things but i also did enough just to get by so you know where and they had the proposition 48 then if you didn't have this gpa and in this sat score then you were ineligible to play basketball sure you know ncaa wise so i had to go the junior college route which a lot of kids did then and, you know, and changed, you know, I, as a kid, you know, I, I didn't know any better. Sure. You know, I just, sure. I, did, I did just enough to get right. by. I was a great basketball player. And uh, all of a sudden it came down to it and I'm like, oh, I can't go to any of these schools. So, you and know. That, and that's back when, when, you know, being a stud in the sport was pretty much enough. I right. Mean, oh, you, exactly. You'd go somewhere and that, that's. Oh, I mean, I think that Proposition 48 rule, I don't, you, I don't know if I'm exactly right here, but I graduated in 89. That probably came into effect about 87 or 88. Right, right, so, just before. Right, and so all these kids across the nation were like, oh, my gosh. And junior college, you know, they were happy as could be because all these kids now had to go right. to junior college. Talent was trickling right. downhill for right. the good. Exactly. Sure, sure. Well, and, and, you know, you, you see a lot of that now. <laughs> you know, what, what the uh, the uh, qualifying GPA now for Division One it went to a whopping 2.3. Exactly. Right. You know, right. and, and, and so it's another shove. And it's amazing you think, well, 2.3. Right. But it's amazing how many people, you know, 2.3 is a big difference. That .1 is a huge it's difference. Huge. Yeah, you're right. And, and, right. and we've already seen because of the numbers, not so much because of grades, but because of numbers, the talent trickling down to the other programs. Oh, yeah. You've got teams like, uh, you know, Florida Gulf Coast mm-hmm. and, and some of these teams that, that, you know, were pretty much unheard of, but, but you've got this talent. Now, I'm not saying that the only reason why those programs get good talent are because they're getting the kids that can't make the grade. That's, it, it, there's a whole slew right. of reasons why kids go to smaller schools, but that's a big portion of it. Oh, yeah. And, and I think that um, you're going to continue seeing that. But just the sheer numbers, because you have so many players out there that are trickling down, it would not be unheard of to have a small school have a guy with a, a, a you know, a 3.2. And he's just like, man, I, I can't get in anywhere right. else because right. the guy with the 3.8, who is just as good as me, is getting ahead. So, right. you know, I'm glad you brought that right. up because that's something that we really preach is grades, grades, oh, yeah. grades. I mean, I mean – Expand on that a little bit from well, from, I mean, uh, from a coach's perspective to your team. It, you know, it drives me crazy. I mean, I you know I have kids that I deal with every day that that from I've been coaching. You know, I coached at Wolfson High School mm-hmm. for a number of years, and I probably saw ten players in my time in my eight years at Wolfson that were better than any of the kids that we ever had, but they were never eligible to get on the court. And I mean, these kids would walk in. They come out of open gyms. We'd see them play. Look up their GPAs, and they're ineligible to play. And they just don't get it because it could change their life. Sure, oh, yeah. you know, just just sitting in the classroom and doing what you're supposed to do. For some of these kids, just getting a two point oh, you know, just getting enough to be eligible in high school could change their life. You know, sure. you could, they could go to a junior college, but they they don't they don't get it until it's too late. And it's, uh, you preach it all the time, and they just look at you like, oh, okay, okay, coach, okay, coach. But then the next, next thing you know, they're on the sideline and they're not playing. So well, it's frustrating. That drive, that I mean, and again, we, and we'll talk about it till the day I'm gone, uh, the, how important the grades are, and not just as a requirement to get into a college program for basketball or, or whatever your sport may be, but by God, to get in and learn something. And, and this is the thing. Kids go to college and they're like, oh, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know what my major should be. 
you don't have to know before you go into college. Go into college, take an array of classes. You might decide, God, you know what? This archaeology thing is pretty cool. It doesn't right. make money, but it's what I dig. No pun intended. Yeah. But but you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the fact is, that's what college is all about. And so, you know, grades are important for sports, yes, but grades are so important just to be able to go to college and experience right. that life. And, and as you said, it can change your life. Right. And right. by God, if you happen to be able to play sports, that's even better. Mm -hmm. What a oh, great yeah. opportunity. I mean, it literally, it is life changing. You see, I see guys on the street now that – Still doing nothing. They're working, you know, minimum wage jobs. When get it done in the classroom, and you're it's a whole other world for you. Sure, sure. Now, <laughs> it, it, let me ask you this. Speaking of, you know, life changing and making decisions. Now, you are coaching at the high school level. I believe you did coach at the professional level, the mm -hmm. ABA, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. I did that for two years. High school versus college. Is this? I mean, would you ultimately like to get into the college ranks, or, or are you happy where right. you're at? Well, you know, I, I coached four years of junior college, okay. and, and I really enjoyed the college level. Um, I think it's probably every coach's dream to probably even more so than NBA is to coach on the college level, big time Division One college. Sure, you know it's where. But the, the you know with a family, it's just such a tough business. I have so many friends. That uh, if you're an assistant, the head coach gets fired. All of a sudden, oh, I'm out of I'm out of a job, mm -hmm. and it's not that easy to get back into. So I mean, it's just it's just t too tough to do. I don't I wouldn't want to take the chance of. And I've had the opportunity to take some college jobs, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't want to take the chance of doing it and then a year be out of a job, you know, searching what am I going to do next. Well, <laughs> and it's not just you. It's it's the family. It's, right, and it's a lot tougher now than it, it because it's so bloody competitive oh it's it's and, and it's the crazy. money and and there's just so many things tied into it that it, it you know the pressure's on i mean one, oh, one yeah. bad year and you're out yeah it, totally so. i mean a, i mean any any college level i mean i see coaches friends of mine that were coaching at a you know mid division two that you know they were just getting 500 every year and all of a sudden winning got important and now they're out of a job sure you right. know, and they're looking around like okay I, all i know how to do is coach basketball what the heck am i going to do now Mm. Let so. me ask, um, is it – with the context that you have at the college level, is it is it frustrating for coaches, specifically for basketball, that athletes and the players that come in only stay in for a year to, uh, and then they can and then they can leave. So right. like baseball, where they stay for three years, right. so you can get the coaches can get some value and try to do something with with the players. Um, I mean, is it frustrating for the for these coaches that players may come in and out? You know, it's like a revolving door. You know, I think I, – I don't think – like John Calipari at Kentucky, I don't think it's frustrating for him because, I mean, at, there's an article on ESPN today how he's got the eight eight of the top players coming in next year. It's a business for him. Sure. You know, he just, he's going to make money off of that. He's going to get a contract extension. He's going to win games because he brought eight of the big, best freshmen in. In my opinion, is with the, because those coaches are doing that, they're bringing in the one and dones, mm -hmm. the, co the Florida Gulf Coast. They're getting better because they're getting the kids that are probably good enough that in the past could have gone to Kentucky, stayed sure. there for four years, but now they're getting overlooked because they want the next big NBA player. Sure, right. the now LeBrons, they, right? And yeah. now, so then now they got to look at where where am I going to go to school? You know, so that's why the the mid level Division ones are probably getting better because. Those really good players are getting passed over by the big schools. It's kind of trickling its way down. <clears throat> to add to that, you figure, you know, with the pressure of the winning and the money and, and everything that's involved, I mean, what, how do you feel about that? I mean, because it seems like the emphasis is no longer on – College, oh, no. it's almost like a, it's almost like a, you know the uh, AAA for baseball. Right. I mean, I mean, I've heard a lot of people say D Division Three of basketball is the best division of basketball right now because it's pure. Sure. Right. You know, sure. Um, the Division One is like minor league for the NBA now. You know, it's right. more of a business. NCAA tournament is great. It's always going to be great because oh, you're one yeah. and done. There can be upsets, but the regular season is kind of getting washed away because it's it's just all these great players just competing against each other and when the lower levels have you know pure basketball every night it's it's a battle sure you know, guys are playing against each other for four years so it, there gets to be you know a lot more involved man well i um i i gotta ask you this and and you know we, we chuck and i were talking about this the fact is one of your kids your son your oldest actually played on right. your team 
and I say played because he just finished his last year this year. Uh, he'll be graduating as a senior. Uh, off to um, Johnson and Wales. Johnson and Wales. Uh, Charlotte. Yeah, Charlotte. So he's got a basketball scholarship. How in the world – Yeah, and, and it is funny because there are so many angles that you can hit this from, uh, for, from a parent standpoint. But how did you handle that as a parent and a coach? What, what's your take – as far as your style? Because we know there's a lot of them out there. What was your style well, in dealing with that? One thing, I had great assistance. I'd just look at the bench and say, hey, <laughs> can somebody take care of Kyle? For me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'd just say, he's not going nice. to talk to me, so can somebody That's please right. take care of him? <laughs> <laughs> nice. but, Delegation. You know, right. <laughs> you know, he kind of he, – he, Kyle kind of got eased into it because as a junior, you know, he played JV as his uh, freshman and sophomore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Didn't want to put any pressure on him. Sure. One, just wanted to let him play under a different coach, you know, our JV coach. Uh, who was a great coach, handled that. And then um, as a, a junior, he had probably – we had eight seniors. So he saw spot playing time. He didn't get a ton of playing time. Right. But uh, but he, he there was no pressure for him. You know, he kind of – he played. He had some great games. And we went down to Palatka, who went to the Final Four, and he had four or five threes down there nice. as a junior. And so, he you know, he, he started building up confidence. And coming to his senior year, all those guys graduated, and, they're, you know, it was his. It's his show. Now it's man. his show now, and he stepped up to the plate. And, you know, there was really not a lot that I had to do. You know, mm -hmm. he worked hard during the summer. He worked with Lee Humphrey, who won a national championship oh, with yeah. the Gators. Sure. Yep. Lee worked him out twice a week at Nice. I mean, every day. I mean, if you're, you're getting instruction from Lee, you're not you're going to get better. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, Kyle did that and uh, stepped into his senior year and had – Phenomenal year. Outstanding. Yeah. Now, as good as he was doing in, in, in the kind of year he had, he's, he's got, you know, a great, a great uh, you know, coach and his dad. How was the recruiting offers? I mean, it was it, were the phones burning up? Did you have coaches lined up? I mean, because no. I think there's a misconception right. there from people think, oh, you know, because you're connected, you know, right. and you're the coach, you probably got them lined up. How, how was that? No, people are going to – I mean, as – as, Again, we'll go back to AAU because AAU is big for basketball. A lot mm -hmm. of sports, travel mm -hmm. sports. Uh, but the summer between his junior and senior year, he had a really good AAU season. They, he, we were getting no no recruiting really much at all. And then he, uh, we played a team from New York, and he had 20 points nice. down in Orlando. And all of a sudden I get back home and I have five voicemails from coaches. But still, <laughs> not recruiting, but can you tell me about this kid Kyle? Sure, a little you know, interest. We saw, we saw him play. Right. But um, – be honest with you, and this is not a, and you know, I've told you this before, it's not a plug to view my sport, but I got on the website and I started, I went, did the breakdown of the colleges mm -hmm. on there. Mm -hmm. I started going to colleges, finding coaches, sending out profiles and doing all that until, you know, I start, finally get started getting some feedback. He got some visits, went and played for some people. And nice. uh, I mean, it was just a, a trial and trial process to get it, to get it done. But I mean. You, you can't sit back and wait to be recruited. And, right. And, and, I mean, we knew that we, he couldn't do that with him. So Right. Well, and that's and, and that's a, a great lesson. And, of course, again, I mean, you're the coach, but you still need the tools. And oh. what did you use? Viewmysport.com. <laughs> I'm going to throw the shameless plug out there. Absolutely. I don't mind. I don't mind at all. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I tell you what, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, when we come back, we're going to jump into some more details uh, as far as what uh, Scott's history was like from a recruiting perspective with his team and some uh, do's and don'ts and things of that nature. So we'll be back in just a few minutes. There are thousands of high school athletes that want to play at the college level. They just don't get noticed. At ViewMySport.com, we get your game out of the shadows and into the college spotlight. It's fast, easy, best of all, it's free. In the time you can text your friends, you can create and send your own athlete profile to as many colleges as you want. Get to the next level. Visit ViewMySport.com today and follow the three simple steps. Why wait? Your competition's not. All right. Thanks for joining us. Um, we're going to go ahead and get right back into this here on the breakdown. We want to talk about our viewmysport.com athlete of the week, though. Chuck's going to tell you all about our athlete of the week. Uh, this week, we have a, a, an outstanding individual, one who um, uh, you know exemplifies what it means to be a student athlete and, and working not just in the classroom, but in his community as well. 
This week's ViewMySport.com's Athlete of the Week is Colin Corley. He's a midfielder from the Mighty Mustangs of Marquette High School in Chesterfield, Missouri, which is just west of St. Louis. Uh, Colin, as I said, is, is doing a doing a bang up job in the classroom. He's taken a lot of AP classes. He's won or been on the honor roll for three years. Um, he nice. also plays football. He's a, he's the, he was the second uh, leading scorer uh, for the football team as, as the kicker. Um, he uh, does a lot in the community, I think, which is very exciting to, to see and hear from, from the youth in our, in, in the community. He's, he's, done a lot of work with uh, the Pujols Family Foundation, which is a, it's an entity out in St. Louis that helps uh, kids with uh, Down syndrome. Nice, he, good for him. He works mm-hmm. with uh, kids with cancer. Um, he does, uh, he works as a volunteer with the Special Needs uh, Soccer Association in his, uh, in his neighborhood. Um, and he also is a, a volunteer coach for the U11 boys um, soccer team. And one final thing about, um, about Colin, is that just last year he and, and three of his friends were driving home from eating out and uh, noticed a um, a brush fire and he uh, he and his friends stopped they tried they took control of the situation they they made arrangements to they called the fire department and get him out there um, and it um, according to the to the former mayor of of the town that quote these the quick action of these individuals helped avert a disaster. Wow. And so the boys received a um, certificate of appreciation um, for their outstanding and quick thinking um, in, in resolving Great this matter. Colin. So, so Colin's, job, Colin. Colin, Colin's doing it and doing it well. And uh, congratulations as um, our ViewMySport.com's Athlete of the Week. Outstanding. Great job. And you'll be able to go to ViewMySport.com and see Colin's uh, information right there on our homepage. Click on it and be taken right to his profile. So uh, very good. Great job, yes. Colin. Yes. All right. Well, we're going to jump right back into this. Again, we've got some um, nice little topics to, to get into, something that we just touched base a little bit while we're on break. Um, and I wanted uh, Coach Cooper here to expand a little bit. And that's the, the, you know, the stigma of, you know, favoritism. When you have a kid on your team, you, you know, the other parents on the outside looking in tend to, you know, throw the daggers at you because they think that uh, there might be some sort of, uh, again, favoritism right. shown. Uh, how did that go? Uh, did, did you have to experience any of that? Well, it's tough. I probably, I probably got more from it from my dad than anybody, <laughs> to be honest with you. Nice. That's because I, as a junior, I wasn't playing him enough. So... You know, I always got, you know, oh, get, get Kyle in the game, get Kyle in the game. I was like, his time's going to come, trust me. Um, but, if you know, I think it would have been difficult if Kyle hadn't done so well right off the bat mm-hmm. as a senior mm-hmm. uh, because he stepped up and, and led the team and did what he needed to do and really, you know, produced. It, it made it pretty easy because the assistant coaches, his teammates, everybody was like, get, get Kyle the ball, you know. Once everybody believed in him, then it, it made it pretty easy. You know, nice. if he would have – if he would have – you know, started off slow, then it would have been a little tougher for me. I, I would, But uh, I'm probably, I probably would have sat his butt down. There <laughs> so, you go. That, that, so, I mean, nice. I, think, I think I think that the players and coaches and everybody knew that, and Kyle, that if, uh, you know, that I'm, I'm going to treat everybody fairly. And if he knew that, I think it, it, everybody knew that. That's great. That's well, And that's part of what we were talking about, that, that you have the one extreme – where, you know, the kid can slough off and pretty much get whatever playing time he wants. That's just the type of coach his dad was, you know. And then you have the other side, which I tend to be more like yourself, where, you know, uh-uh, right. if, if anything, I'm going to make you maybe even work a little exactly. harder to right. ensure oh, yeah. that I'm not being accused exactly. of favoritism. Exactly. So, well, that's great. Well, and, and that's that's nice to know, and especially for the parents out there, you know, ask. Talk to the coach. If you can't totally. get dialogue with the coach, if, if you're afraid of maybe rubbing them the wrong way and, and, and maybe risking your son's playing time, just by asking a basic question like mm-hmm. that, I'd say you probably got bigger issues with that program right. than, than favoritism. You know, our right. coaches over the year. I mean, uh, as long as I've been coaching and been part of teams, you, you'll see that, I mean, they're no, no, you can never make everybody happy. Right. You know, everybody right. thinks they should play an entire game, but – there's so many times where I'll be sitting in my office and a kid comes in and will hand his uniform in and 
uh, coach, I'm not going to play anymore. I was like, this is the first I've heard of it, you know? Whoa. If you'd come and talk to me, you know, a month ago or a couple weeks ago, maybe we could have talked this out and you understood where I was coming from. But it, it happens because, like I said, you're not ever going to make everybody happy. You just, sure. you just have to look at the big picture and try to do what's best for your team. So. But you sure. – but you- had that talk at the beginning of the season, I like exactly. most oh, yeah. coaches that say, "Hey, you know, this is the way it is." I right. mean, this is the, you set the expectation, exactly right? But but they you know they choose not to exactly. see it through. Exactly, okay. right. selective hearing. Oh, exactly, 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 <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah, that's and that that is tough. And and of course, I mean, from a parent side, I mean, eh, you know, like you said, you know, every parent thinks that their kids should be out there. Every, you know, they 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 see things through. You know. Uh, very well selective sight. I mean, right. they see the good. They they don't see maybe what goes on at, at right. uh, practice. Exactly the oh, attitude yeah, exactly. aspect. Right. And, and I've I've seen mm -hmm. it. I've seen mm -hmm. actually parents um, show up at a practice where I've been, and it was their first time, and they'd see some of the shenanigans that the, oh. the kid pulls, and they're just like, "Oh my God, that's not my that that's right. not my guy," you know. Right. And they oh, can't yeah. believe it, and it's like, ah, you know, the light bulb's coming on a little bit. So, all right, now now I, I got to ask you again. And, and, and you're kind of wearing two hats here today because you're here as a parent and you're here as a coach. Right. The recruiting, and you already touched base on this a little bit as far as your role. I mean, at what point did you start the – and knowing what you know, at what part uh, or what time did you start the recruiting process? When did the wheels start going? Because, and, you know, again, at the beginning, I mean, maybe you didn't recognize talent in Kyle yet. I mean, right, right. But oh, how, no. was it, how was it for you, and when did you no, really you're right. Early gear? on, and, and as a coach, it was tough for me because early on I worried about my guys who are juniors and seniors. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get them out in front of coaches and – Kyle's the last thing on my mind when he's a freshman playing JV. You know, I'm, I'm hear trying. That, hear that Kyle? Last thing on his mind. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, <laughs> can we edit? Edit? Yeah. edit. <laughs> he does love you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, so, you know, I had to worry about all them. And it's almost like, you know, all, okay, now here, now Kyle's a junior and I'm, and I started too late, but it, luckily it worked out for me, but it won't work out for everybody if they start, you know, in a junior year. Sure. You know, I you, you got to get out as early as possible these days. You know, sure. The more the coach sees you, the more they know of you, watch you grow as a from a freshman to a senior. Um, you got to do that. And my my process with Kyle probably started uh, between us slightly between his sophomore and junior year, and then full force his junior year mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. his senior year. And, and you you touched on this, but it's a good point. I want to reiterate for our our uh, viewers out there. The fact is, early and often. Oh, yeah. um, what's your thought on, well, but, you know, I'm stinking it up. I'm a freshman. I'm stinking it up. You know, I, I, I haven't played much. You know, I, I don't want to bring attention to myself from a coach. You might see that I blow, and then all of a sudden, you know, I'm not going to get any more looks. Myth? Oh, that's a myth. Totally a myth. Expand on that It's a totally me. myth. And I, like I told, and just like I said with Kyle, I mean, between his sophomore and junior year, I think it was when he played the team from New York, he wasn't on anybody's radar, mm -hmm. you know. And and all of a sudden we go down to AAU and he has one good game, and you would have, you know, you would have thought he was Michael Jordan. You know, all of a sudden <laughs> I got voicemails from coaches. I'm like, nice. You know, wait a second, Raleigh Mas Massimino, who play uh, coach at Villanova, oh, yeah, huh? championship. Oh, yeah. he coaches down in Northwood now, oh, okay. and I get a voicemail from him. I'm like. <laughs> Raleigh Massimino's calling me about my son. Come on, outstanding. But that's wow. the thing. It's just one good game could put you on the radar. So I mean, that that's the same thinking. I mean, if I'm going to stink it up, but but what if you have a great game and nobody was there to see you or nobody knew about sure. it? You know, it goes both ways. Well, I mean, and the coaches, I mean, they have pretty good heads on their shoulder. It's not like this is their oh, they first their, their first go round. They right. know that these kids are going to improve. Well, that they hope. I mean, there's sure. got to be a spark or something that oh, catches their eye. You can go. I have guys that are baseball coaches, baseball coaches and scouts, and you know they can go watch a guy strike out three times and know he's going to be a heck of a player just because of everything he does. Certain right. mechanics, certain right. mechanics, right. and everything. Okay, he had a bad day. He struck out three times, but I'm sure as heck going to come back and watch him because all the good things that he did. You know, if a basketball court, you, you, you go in, you score three points, you don't think you're going to get anything, but a coach saw the defense you played, saw the passes the hustle, you made. The transition. The, took three charges and things like mm -hmm. that. And they're like, okay, this kid's young. If he's doing all that now, wow, maybe maybe we need to keep an eye on him. A coachable so, right, entity. Right. Sure, sure. That's great. Good, good stuff. Well, now, I wanted to ask you, because, and again, you're a teacher, obviously, mm -hmm. and, and probably pretty much a teacher first, or like you oh, said, yeah, you're a coach in the classroom. Right. Now, as far as what you do for the kids, obviously you're, you're, you're hammering point 
uh, is grades. You know, mm-hmm. make sure that you get the grades and you know, you have the messages for for your players. What else are you doing as a coach from a recruiting standpoint? I mean, what what? And maybe I should ask this: What do you feel are your responsibilities from a recruiting perspective? And there's a reason why I'm asking you that. I just want to hear your take on that. Well, my I feel like, and I tell my kids and the parents that I, I can do only so much. I can I can take them, I can show them what to do, I can get them to a certain point, mm-hmm. but then they have to take over. I mean, I can't I can't get a kid's transcripts in. I can't do certain things that the parents have to sign off on, and they have to take care of. If if you know, if they're not returning coaches' calls. If they're, I mean, there are a lot of things involved. I can get them – I can get them looks by coaches. You know, I can call the people that I know, and I don't know every coach in the country. There are thousands of schools. I can get a, a handful to them. Sure. Um, but they have to do the rest. They, I mean, they. I can make game film, but, you know, if I hand my game film to, to Bobby and Bobby doesn't get it out to the coach, then, you know, there's, uh, my hands are tied. Sure. Sure, and, and and that's exactly right. And I think we see a consistent message um, where a lot of coaches are like, "Listen, I'll do what I can." However, it's really—I mean, your responsibility are to all of the students that you teach, mm-hmm. and 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 all of the responsibilities that come there to coach the team. You know, to to try to win. Uh, the fact is, you're not a recruiter. You're not a scout. You're not an evaluator. You are the high school basketball coach. Now, yes, like you said, you know, you've got some contacts. Luckily, a lot of coaches don't. All right. They, they oh, just yeah. don't. I mean, you know, that maybe maybe they came into coaching a different route. Um, so maybe they don't even have that luxury. So the fact is you do what you can do, but you can't be held accountable and responsible. Like, hey, you know, if I'm a parent, listen, man, you're supposed to be hooking my son up. Right. And that is, in my opinion – one of the most unfair oh, stances oh, a parent right. can take. Oh, totally. And you probably hear a lot of that. Oh, I hear it all the time. <laughs> I mean, I, it's it's funny because I get I get called. I'm really close. Like you said, I coach AAU, so mm-hmm. I have a lot of my son's friends, and I've coached them all. They're at different high schools. Mm-hmm. They remain friends, and I'll get calls from kids and say, "Coach, my coach isn't helping me out. Can you help me? You know, I got to get in front of the school. Can you help me out?" I'm like, well, "What are you doing? Are you what have you done? Are you, you know?" Sure. Okay, let's say your coach isn't helping you out, but have you done X, Y, and Z? Are you getting getting out there? No, and so it, maybe it that's the reason. You know, right? I'll help you if you help right, yourself. Right, exactly. Well, and, I, and I, th- I, th- I feel like it's it's almost. I don't want to sound terrible, but it's we're in a lazy society. Everybody wants things to come to them. Entitlement, right? Entitlement. They just they, yeah, they, they want the word. they want things to come to them, and uh, they don't want to go out and work for it. They think if you have a big game, then you're automatically going to have these coaches flocking to you. Sure. you got to do work to get there. Not, not with the numbers. Mm-hmm. There's just too many. And we, we preach this all the time. There are hundreds of thousands of kids playing and very small number of scholarships. The fact is you better do something to separate yourself. Every little thing can make a difference. And at ViewMySport.com, that's our big mantra. The fact is, we're not going to give it to you. We're not going to do everything for you. We're not going to feed you. What we're going to do is we're going to teach you how to fish to feed yourself. Right, right. Um, that's why we create the tools. We, we say we are not a recruiting service, but by God, we make some pretty darn good tools for you to use easily to get the exposure and some of those things. Right. Even with the best tools and the best effort, Things may not work out. That's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. Tell you what, we're going to take another quick break. When we come back, we're going to jump into some more details, some recruiting information, hopefully some things that you guys out there will find useful. If we can just get one tidbit that makes the difference for you, we've done our job. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hey, Roger Tillis here from The Breakdown. Martial arts training has fast become a favorite choice for athletes of all types to improve their overall skill and fundamentals. That's why I recommend Pro Martial Arts of Jacksonville, right here in North Florida. Their system encompasses an exciting and diverse curriculum of martial arts techniques drawn from the Korean arts of Tang Soo Do, Taekwondo, and Hikido. At Pro Martial Arts of Jacksonville, they acquire more than just black belt kicking and punching skills. There's a life skills training program, and kids learn the value of a lifestyle of quiet confidence, poise, and fulfillment. 
Check out their grand opening this Saturday, April 27th, from 9 to 3. Join in on some of the mini classes and demonstrations, break some boards, meet Rocky the Rhino, and enjoy free pizza and refreshments. That's Pro Martial Arts at 10920-10 Bay Meadows Road in the Public Shopping Center. All right, and we're back. Hey, thanks for tuning in at uh, the breakdown sponsored by ViewMySport.com here at the ViewMySport.com studios. What do you think? Pretty nice awesome. setup. <laughs> Best place I've ever seen. <laughs> Stop. You heard it from the horse's <laughs> mouth. That's right. I'll give you your 20 bucks. <laughs> do, you, do you take a check for 20 bucks? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you don't mind ink that's still <laughs> wet. Yeah. <laughs> Now, I tell you, before our break, uh, we were talking about and touching base on, um, you know, the, the coach's role in the recruiting process for the players and the difficulties and the misconceptions and myths that are out there. And, we, you know, we just want to confirm. The fact is uh, a coach, especially a teaching coach, has a lot of responsibility, not to mention a married-with-children teaching coach. I mean, we, you know, again, we can't put enough emphasis about this. That is a lot on the plate. And the fact is, uh, you know, it's difficult. So I think that um, I think that a lot of parents and players, they view the coach as the guy that has to do it all. And, Scott, you already mentioned, you said, you know, what are you doing? Meaning you, the parent, you, the player. What are you doing? You know what? It is your scholarship. It is your money that you're saving, parents. Um, so the fact is, if the coach is teaching your player how to get the best out of what they've got, how to be a better athlete, how to be a better student, they're doing all the important things, then you should at least try to handle the business side of the recruiting. And that is to prepare your, uh, your student athlete, your child, how to discuss and ask questions on the telephone the first time they call the coach. Remember... College coaches don't want to talk to this guy immediately. Yeah, they'll get some background information. But the fact is, they want to talk to the player. How does he handle himself? What's his first impression? And we always say, you got one shot at a first impression. Right. So the parents should be talking to the kids and prepping them. Uh, correct grammar. Um, you know How to conduct themselves when they do go on a visit. How to dress. Uh, making sure that the right classes are taken in school. You know, you can't just take art and wood shop anymore right. and, and boost up that GPA. We talked about this before and the importance. You've got to have the right core classes, and that's where you want to excel. Hey, here's a tip, parents. All that money that you're spending on these special training facilities to make the kid faster, stronger, shooting better, maybe spend a day at a, a tutoring center. Um, maybe being proactive in making sure that their study habits are good. Because as Coach Cooper has already stated, you can be a fantastic athlete. But guess what? There's a bunch of them out there, and if your grades aren't up to par, you're going nowhere. Or you're certainly not going to go to college. Right, right. And, and, and you darn sure won't go to college and play sports. So um, talking about first impressions, get the crazy music off the highlight videos. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, we yeah, talk yeah, about that, that all the time. Do you, do you really? Oh yeah, we just yeah. had a coach, uh, matter of fact, post something on our uh, on our Facebook page where he's like, "Hey, fellas, easy with the music. We you know we don't always turn the volume down or hit the mute button, and all of a sudden we've got f bombs and n words and all the crazy. Oh, yeah, and, and you know we've got people who are pretty sensitive to that stuff working and walking down the hallways. Right. Yeah, uh, I had a great I had a great player did that. He's like, Coach, I'm going to send this off to Coach. Says, Let me see it. I'm I'm oh, like, no. no, no. A, I felt like I was at a club. <laughs> yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Save that stuff for for the family. For that the right. personal highlights. We stuff. always tell them, don't even put music. Get all, get all the stupid special effects and all. Save your money. Yeah, it's cool, but remember who you're sending this to. Right. You know, and that's a great point. Keep that I'm, one for yourself. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> right. And you're right. I, I'm glad you brought that up. And, and again, it's not just the ns, ns music. I mean, there's some stuff out there that is just downright, <laughs> just nasty, bad stuff. So thank you for bringing that yeah. up. That's a great point. Um, and that's coming from a coach, not a parent. You know, so <laughs> listen to what he's saying. Um, now. We're going to get into a little bit more as far as the parent role uh, because, I mean, we, we stress this. This is what ViewMySport.com was built on, and that is here are the tools 
You can no longer say, yeah, but we don't know how or we don't have the means and it costs too much. View My Sport is free. We give you a platform to put every bit of your information, grades, uh, videos. I mean, everything is there in a solid, solid format. It's now up to you, though. You have to physically push a button. You might have to pick up the telephone call, uh, telephone, and and as the athlete, follow up to make sure that coach got the information. I don't care what format you. I don't care if it's view my sport. I don't care if you're sending out basic emails. The fact is, you darn well better pick up the phone and follow up with those phone calls. As as the coach here has already stated, you know you got to work the phone. You got to be on the phone. It was true back when you were doing it. It's true today. I don't care what kind of technology you have. And if you think you can put a few bucks on the table and pay some of these services out there that, that you know, make all these promises, you got another thing coming. Just because you paid them a fee doesn't mean that their phones work any better, you know, to get through to coaches. So the fact is, parents, you better start getting busy and you better dust, dust the book off and you better start making some calls with your kids and keeping your profiles up to date and stay on it. You don't do it once. You do it today. You do it tomorrow. You do it next week. You do it next month until the letter of intent has been signed. You don't stop. Otherwise, I mean, you're kind of devaluing the whole process. You're devaluing the college opportunities for your for your kid. And so, so we're very much sticklers about this. And again, you know, if something doesn't happen after all that effort, you gave it your best shot. And, right, it, no. and, and it does sometimes not happen. Oh, right. I mean, you, right. you've probably seen some fantastic kids come through your program that it just, you know, they were just outnumbered. Right, exactly. I mean, because like you said, there are thousands and thousands of kids that play out there. You know, there were hundreds and hundreds of Scott Coopers out there that could do, you know, whatever I did. Um, and and today with with AAU going on all those travel programs and whatnot, there's so many kids to see. Some people are going to get overlooked. And especially, like you said, if you don't get it, get on the ball and do things, you're going to be one of those that are overlooked. Sure. You know, and I want, I want to bring this up because, you know, we, we throughout the show we've talked AAU, AAU, AAU. And there seems to be, you know, th- this, this aura about AAU, you know, like if I get to play on an AAU team, I'm money. I'm money. <laughs> I mean, w- w- expand on that a little bit as far as, you know, first of all, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly as far as AAU is concerned – and where the benefits and where the, the myths and the pitfalls are. Right. Well, you know, AAU, I think, is a, is a great program. Or it's, I say AAU, but there are a lot of them out there. U, USSA, I mean, they're all YBOA. But sure. travel basketball <laughs> sure. is, is a great program. The problem is the NCAA has put such limitations on co- um, college coaches mm-hmm. that they can only go see people play at certain times. Right. So it's kind of taken away – the recruiting during a high school basketball season. Mm-hmm. They can only if they can only be out a week of high school basketball season, you can't go see, you know, X Very amount of kids play in that time. So now the whole month of July we can go out and watch kids. That makes AAU travel basketball even more important. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. much so important and it's across the board. Like you said, it's uh was was soccer. This year it's it was uh, it just it kind of blew my mind. Uh one of our soccer kids came to me and I said, How'd you guys do? Um, we played we played bowls and we got beat bad. I was like, oh, he goes, yeah, but we didn't have four of our players. I was like, oh, who got hurt? He goes, oh, nobody. They had we had they had a travel soccer game, so they couldn't go to the game. I'm like, wait a second, they missed a high school game for a travel game. He goes, yeah, it happens all the time with us. Good grief. And I'm like, wow, you know, and 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 volleyball travel volleyball is pushed oh. into girls basketball season, yep. so all the girls. You know, some, some there were probably three teams that our girls played this year that didn't have JV teams because mm. they couldn't field teams because all these girls were playing travel volleyball. Sure. So it's kind of taken over, you know, high school sports, uh, and, and and I don't I don't like that. You know. Yeah, I, I, I and and I agree with you. I, I think that the pure aspects of high school sports have just been uh, it's been corrupted horribly. And and you talk about you know the travel the clubs and and whatnot, and I'm seeing more and more and and it's, you know, uh, I'm gonna say it. It's about the money. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, hey, oh, yeah. you've been selected to be on our national team. We're going to travel. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Well, now, give me a thousand dollars. If and, yeah. and that's cheap, <laughs> right? Yeah. You know that that's maybe for the first day. You know, right? You know how how big is your pocketbook? And as soon as you say, ah, gee, I, I don't have I don't have the money. Chuck, your kid is the next one that we're uh, right. thinking is the best. You know, I, I mean, it's about the money. And there's been so much. And, and, and tell me if I'm wrong. It's marketed in a way where, oh no, this is how you get into college. Oh yeah, this oh, yeah. is the only way to get to, to a scholarship oh, by by going to these special tournaments. Design, of course, they don't say. Oh, and by the way, there won't be any college coaches there. They might drive through the parking lot. Right, they're not allowed to be there. They're only allowed to be there during the other months. Exactly, they right. don't tell you that part because they want the check. Right. right. No, you're exactly right. I mean, and it's it's it's, it's all about money. There's a, I read a story about a kid in Georgia who who played with an Adidas AAU team, traveled with Adidas, 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 gets ready for his high school season to start. High school coach buys all Nike shoes. AAU coach won't let him play for that team. So he sits out. 6'10", All-American kid, sits out his high school season because his team was wearing a different pair of shoes. Good grief. Good I mean, that, grief. It's, that's, that's ridiculous. That's what it's come down to. Mom. Well, I, I always said that the worst thing, and I'll probably be – criticized for this don't care my show say what i want (laughs) fact is probably one of the worst things to happen to high school sports is espn espn in like organizations where they've started putting so much emphasis on the high school games i mean terrible just watch the the uh, little league world series i mean it's a whole week or two month of just coverage after coverage after coverage of little kids and what they eat and where their parents are from. And, I, and I mean, come on. I mean, it's Little League Baseball, for God's right. sakes. It's, it's, killed, it's killed the game of basketball in general. I mean, sure. when I, ESPN, they show the highlights. They show the dunks. They show the threes. You look at college and high school basketball, there's no mid-range game now. No. Kids are shooting threes or driving to the hole. Sure. Nobody's – Pulling up, shooting from the elbow, or shooting from a three-point or inside the three-point line right. because they want to be the next LeBron, the next Kobe. That's what they're seeing on if TV. If you're not so on that's the what, highlights, you're not you know, you're not right. playing. Exactly, Jeez. and it's frustrating. Yeah, that's the first thing you try to break kids out of. We we talk about our, our practice always fundamentals. You know, a lot of parents or other coaches are like, aren't you getting ready for the game? We're like, we're trying to teach these kids fundamentals first. They play with the fundamentals, they're going to win the game. Sure. So, I mean, it's just, it's frustrating trying to break habits of, of kids that have grown up just watching the highlights. And, and, and again, it goes back to that, that you know, E word, the entitlement aspects. Mm-hmm. It's what they, you know, what they feel that they are entitled to. Mm-hmm. And, and that's where the glory is. And, and high school sports especially, I mean, yes, it's, it's about the glory of the win. It's the team. And that's, that's another thing, too. You talk about fundamentals, um, you know, the team aspect. You know the camaraderie. The, you know, See, I mean, the back, I, the back of my shirt. Love it. That's, family. That, that's our motto. That's nice. That's <laughs> nice. And, and very cool. And, and that's the way it should be. You know, it should be about the team yeah. and my brothers and my sisters that that are making up that team. You know, take care of your team. Good things can still happen to you exactly as an individual. Right. It doesn't work so well. How many times have you seen a team of individuals get out on the court and just get smoked because oh. they don't play cohesively? Well, I could right. show you film between our season last year and our season this year. Our season last year, we had more as much talent as anybody in the city. We didn't win a district title. This year... They all believed what was on the back of their shirts. They all believed in family. They all loved each other. They stuck up for each other. They battled for each other, whether it was in the classroom, where it was off, you know, out of school, wherever it was. They believed in each other. We won a district championship, got to the Sweet 16. Outstanding. And it was firmly, and you can ask them all what it was all about, and they'll tell, they'll tell you family. I mean, that, that is, it's on the back of our warm-ups. It's on the back of our shirts. That's I mean, great. That's, that's I love all, that. That's yeah. all we – it's, it's, we had some coaches wonder is like whose whose last name is family. I mean, <laughs> oh, no. We had some people ask us that in, in the past. Come so on, like, man. Exa- exactly. <laughs> not not exactly set like, a great example <laughs> from that scholastic aspect. <laughs> That's right. <you> know? <laughs> right. Ay, 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 ay. Well, well, let me let me ask you this now. I mean, so you've you've got the grades aspect down you know you you make sure that these kids are i mean as best you can mm-hmm. you know you're sending the right message there obviously from a team cohesiveness you're sending the right message there 
Do you guys ever discuss and get into the community service aspects? Totally. Just, just like what, you know, with our, with our athlete of the week. I mean, a list as long as my arm of, of the accomplishments and things he's doing. Well, I mean, how, does, how do you see that playing a role from a recruiting standpoint? How important is the type of person you are well, to those coaches I out there? I think, first of all, we, we require our kids. I mean, we've, since I've coached, we do community service, whether it's getting toys for Wolfson Children's Hospital. Mm-hmm. We did a Santa project at Barnes and Nobles and handed out books to kids. It's more so. It's a kind of thing where if they they learn to be better people, right? Number one, if they learn to be better people, things will take care of themselves down the line. Community service will help in recruiting. Sure. We have a kid right now that just won the Division Three national championship at Amherst. Logan Buckner. He played. Oh yeah, yeah, Logan, I remember, yeah. Yeah, Logan played for us at Nice. And uh, in Division Three, they don't give athletic scholarships. Right. But there's money there. Mm-hmm. Any way you can get it about it. And I remember Logan um, visited Emory, visited Amherst, and they were putting packages together to see how close he could get to a full ride. And I remember community service was a big part of it. I think he got eight grand from Amherst for doing X amount of community service. Wow. Uh, Outstanding. So, I mean, it, it's, it's huge. I mean, sure. it depends on the school. My son got money for his community service over his years at Nice. So Boy, that, that and that I takes mean, it above and beyond just the the well, it's a requirement. You know, I gotta right. do this because it's required. You just gave a couple of great examples right. where not only is it judgment of your character and, and but the fact is it makes you a good person. I mean right. and it feels good right. to help. Hey, if you can get some bucks towards your scholarship because you're doing what's right and setting an example. And believe me, you know, you are still a role model to the younger kids that are out well, there playing. Oh, yeah, totally. What a great example. Right. And to I mean, be good, rewarded that good, way. Uh, good things happen to good people. And I tell you what, if you, you bust your butt in the classroom and you go out and help help people that are less fortunate or whatever, something good's going to come out of it. Absolutely. Whether it's a learning experience and you can pass it on to your family or if you get money from school. I mean, something good's going to happen out of it. That's fantastic. Well, that's mm-hmm. – and, 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 you know, it's funny. We talk about this. We say, okay – Athletes, they're, you know, all the basketball players, they're all really, really good. Not everybody's going to get in to get a scholarship. So where's the tiebreaker there? Oh, grades. Okay, higher GPAs, good SAT scores, good ACT scores, the whole works. Well, now what we're finding is that all of these athletes, they're starting to shake things up scholastically. So now they're right. all really good in their skills, but now they're also really good in the classroom. Okay, now what do we do for a tiebreaker? Now how do I make my decision? You know, I have two scholarships and 2,000 players. Now what am I looking at? Ah, right. here's the tiebreaker, the new one, community service work. Right. How active, not just the bare minimum, but where are you truly active in your community? How are you having an impact? What are you doing? And, and, and these coaches are looking at that and saying, hey, tell you what, I'll take the kid with the 3.9 that can shoot threes like mad, but God, look at this. He spent the whole summer you know, building houses for Habitat for Humanity or, or doing some other selfless you know, activity. So right. that, that is fantastic. And that, that's, I tell you what, work on your dribble, work on your shooting, mm-hmm. work on all the fundamentals, but by God, put that time in your study habits for the classroom and get active in the community. Step that, away from the Xbox. Oh, please. God, <laughs> cut the wires. <laughs> yeah, when, when, yeah, that's cut that. the Mom, Dad, that's uh, another take out thing. The, take you know? out the batteries. Now it's all wireless. That's so. right. That's right. <laughs> so the, the, these are all areas that, you know, it's a winning recipe. Does it guarantee a scholarship? Not a chance. It just doesn't work that way. And I will say this. One last moment before we go on another break. Beware of the companies and the services and the evaluators and the talent scouts and everybody else that's around you telling you they can guarantee your scholarship. They can guarantee that you, they're going to get you those connections. It doesn't work that way. I don't care how much money you pay them. It doesn't change the process. So you better get off the lazy train and, Get off and, and start doing some of this stuff yourself with tools like ViewMySport.com and, and uh, you know, shake it out yourself. See if you can make things happen. Right. All right, we're going to take another quick break, and when we come back, we're going to get some uh, parting wisdom from Coach Scott <laughs> Cooper, see if we can send you uh, off with a couple of nuggets, and um, we'll see what goes on from there. Yep. Be right back. Are you 
a high school athlete, parent of a high school athlete, maybe a high school coach or a college coach looking for a high school athlete, or just a fan of high school and college sports, then you need the View Recruit mobile recruiting app. It's got everything. Athletes can create profiles, including their highlight videos. They can use the Recruit Network to send their profiles directly to college coaches. If a coach likes your profile, great. You get a notice directly on your mobile device and receive an email to boot. College coaches can receive updates directly on their devices and use the search function to find the talent that fits their program. Whether you're an athlete or a college coach, it's like having your very own recruiting department right at your fingertips. Download the View Recruit app now on iTunes for your iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch. Be part of the number one high school athletics and college coaching network. Get it today, the View Recruit mobile recruiting app. All right, and we're back here on The Breakdown. Thanks for tuning back in. I'm Roger Tillis here with Chuck Olesker and our guest today, Coach Scott Cooper from Nice High School. Um, we want to send a couple of nuggets of wisdom out with the parents and the players that are viewing today. Uh, we feel that, uh, you know, th there's, there's one or two things that are just must-haves. you got to have. And, and we were talking about this a little bit on the break. Um, I'll lead in a little bit uh, with the, the one myth. We were just wondering, okay, I'm a, I'm a parent. I've got a kid that's a sophomore, let's say, uh, average player. I'm not quite sure really what I need to be working on at this point. You know, if he stinks shooting, yeah, I guess, you know, get him to, you know, you know the shooting drills or whatever, he's got to work on that. But from a, from a coach who's been there, I mean, what would you suggest, A, to how do I prepare my kid to be a better ball player, and B, looking forward to the potential recruiting process, what, what should I as a parent be doing right. at this point? Uh, the recruiting process, you can never start too early. I mean, get, get all your ducks in a row. Don't wait until, you know, all of a sudden, okay, I think my kid can play and he needs a scholarship and you have a month to do it. Right. You know, get, get the ball rolling early. Get, all the, get everything set up. Get the tools ready. Get, get everything you need to do in order. Mm -hmm. um, but as a player, just to get better, it's, it's all about gym time. I mean, get, just get in the gym. So a lot of kids today, again – Watching ESPN, they see everything that's going on. They look at Division One basketball, and they think, "Okay, my season ended. Next season, I'll you know I'll try to get better." So I mean, there's a big layoff there. They all summer they they do everything but play basketball. Got to get in the gym. You got to work. I mean, every day. There's no there's, you don't have a day off, right? Uh, to prepare yourself in all aspects of the game. You know, if you if you need to work on your shooting, shoot 500 jump shots a day. Find a buddy to rebound for you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if in, in defense you can't. I mean, that's all heart. You know, if you if, if anybody can Speed, be a great hustle. defender, yeah, just right. just it's all about heart and 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 digging in and getting it done. Um, but the little things of the game, the the ball handling, the shooting the ball, those are things that you need to work on every day to get yourself better. Okay, let me ask you. So let's say my kid is, uh, you know, he's six now. He can dunk his tail off. Um, Kid can't make it down the court to save his life. Uh, a little lazy as far as defense. Does he sit back saying, yeah, but I'm 6'9", and I can, I can put it to the hole anytime I want. Is that good enough, or does he need to round his game up a little bit more? Totally needs to round his game up because there, there are hundreds of 6'9 guys out there. Mm -hmm. How is he going to separate himself from the others? Mm -hmm. You know, there's a 6'9 guys out there that can defend, can block shots, that can, can dunk every bit as good as him. But – What's he going to do to separate himself from that person? Gotcha. You know what I mean? Sure, so it's, sure. It's totally you, – you've got to round your game. And if you're a little lazy, maybe it's not your sport, you know, Cause, because you've <laughs> got to work at it. You know? Good point. If you, if you want to sit and play the Xbox and, and not work, then you probably – should be looking for an Xbox scholarship somewhere. <laughs> There's such a thing. <laughs> Xbox. <laughs> well, now, when you have um, – and it's funny, we, we talk about, you know, the 6'9 kid that can't make a, a free throw. And I, I think they probably think back and say, hey, man, Shaquille O'Neal couldn't, couldn't shoot a free throw. And, and, I mean, he became famous <laughs> partially because he couldn't make his free, free throws. throws. Right. And, and I think it sent a bad message because a lot of kids are probably out there thinking, well, man, you know, look at all right. the people that can't make free throws. I think it's a myth. I mean, from a from a college perspective, I think no. Oh, yeah. man, I want my guys making their free yeah, throws. Yeah, you kidding me? I don't care how big you are. I mean, especially in college. I mean, you sent a, a game, several of the games this year went down to the line, right? And they were to the Louisville, Michigan game. They had the guy that in the corner who can't shoot a free throw to save his life, and they didn't foul him. 
But I mean, you know that that's winning and losing games. You sure. don't you don't make free that's throws. Right. Yeah. Sure. How, many, how many games are won and lost at the free oh, throw I, line? Oh, that's what I will tell our. We practice it all the time. I said you will not win games if you miss free throws. It right. won't it won't happen. And to see it then go into the pro level and be so cavalier about it just right. blows me. I mean, away. it's a whole other world. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a, yeah. And then that, but that's what kids see. Yeah. That's what kids and the parents see. And that's right? what sticks in their and head. It sticks in their head. But that's a whole nother ball game. Sure. You know? Yeah. Now, now I, I want to touch base on something that you talked about. You know, we, we, we've discussed AAU. We talked about all these different travel and club, club teams and whatnot. Um, I'm a parent, maybe a single parent, don't have much in the way of funds. Um, you know, I can't afford to send my kid to these paid camps or to these travel teams, there's just no way he's ever going to be able to participate in those areas. Just can't do it. So what do I do for my kid? Where do I, where do I encourage him to try to get more gym time? And, and, and I'm sure gym time, I mean, I, and I've seen video of kids that could just knock out threes all day long and trick shots and whatnot, but throw a team around them and, and put a defense oh, right. in front of them, all of a sudden the kid can't, you know, he right. can't do anything. Right. So obviously you have to play. You have to get on the court and transition. You can't just practice free throws all summer. I mean, is there is there a, a place for those types? I mean, of there kids there to are. Go? I mean, there's some there are some great coaches out there for for travel teams, travel mm-hmm. sports that are there just to help kids. Mm-hmm. So if you do your research, you can find somebody. I mean, you can go somewhere and play play. For, you might not play travel from you know jacksonville to las vegas for a tournament right but they'll find some local stuff for you to get you in the gym Mm -hmm. and 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 play i mean there's some there's some coaches out there you know there are other coaches out there like you said probably more than not probably nine out of ten are just looking for a paycheck sure but there's that one or two that are roaming around out there that'll help for the kids right Right. so the, the the tip there then to the parents regarding that aspect ask yeah do a little research do research ymcas YMCA's, I, I'm have a meeting with YMCA next week about starting a summer basketball program in Jacksonville and St. John's County about getting all these high school kids together and putting teams together in the YMCA uniforms and playing each other uh, and competing from YMCA to YMCA. And as many so, kids as there is. Right. I mean, that, that, right. that in itself could – you'll have ESPN trucks coming on exactly, down. Exactly, exactly. Right, yeah. a whole other stinking tournament yeah, we got to worry right. about. So, I mean, Thanks, but, Scott. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there, there, are, there, are, there are coaches out there that will help these kids out. I mean, you know, and if, if they want to do it like, – yeah, I grew up playing at the park. You know, oh yeah, it yeah, was yeah. not AAU. That's where I learned to play basketball. Park, man, right. I was out in the I was out in the parking yep. lot. Right. <laughs> I mean, I went right. I went and got beat up by you know guys that Ronnie Montgomery, Chris Capers, all these key showers. These guys that played Division One basketball. It's okay, man, you can show your. You it, played with right. goat, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pete Maravich. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I, I mean, we, we we would go to the park just to get beat up. You know, it would yeah. be it would be you know we'd get together and be like, let's go. We got to beat these guys today. Sure. You know, but, for, in this, under the sun, yeah. There was and no air play, conditioning. Yeah, we yeah, yeah. play all day. We were at the park. They had sulfur water. We'd have to I, yep, drink yep. sulfur water to rehydrate no ourselves. But, I mean, and, and I don't know if my son or any of his teammates or any. I don't know if they ever ever go to the you know the park. <laughs> you know, it's all about being in the gym from one gym to another. I'm, sure. So you know, I, I, that's what I say. Go find some old guys to beat up on you at the park. I, that's I, right. That'll, that'll get you better quicker than anything. That's outstanding, right. outstanding. Well, let me ask you before we go. I do want to ask you uh, your coaching style. Are you a Gene Hackman style <laughs> or are you Samuel Jackson? I, I am <laughs> probably neither one. I think okay. my, my players call me a, 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 a players coach. You know, I'm, okay. I'm 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 one of the guys until you know I'm serious. I'm all about right. business as long as they're but, all in. Right? But like I said, yeah. I'm all about family too. I'm like I'm like the dad. You know, I'm I'm fun right. to be around. But if you you cross me the wrong way, you don't do what I say. We're going to correct it. Uh oh. Uh, yeah. Shades of uh, what? Uh, Rice. Uh, what? What's his name? Oh uh, yeah, my, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rutgers. Where, where's Where's the ball? Yeah, get, get, get the ball. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, I got to ask, ah, I mean, well, what's your opinion of someone? I mean, it's do you see any I mean, value there No, there's all? no value there. I, I mean, what blows my mind is how he didn't get his butt kicked all, in all his years of coaching. Yeah, I tell you what, I mean, you it, kidding me? it wasn't just a, a little no. a, a little choke no. here and there. I mean, he was he was just I no, mean, flat it. out it jacking was, those guys from behind and stuff. Man. It was ridiculous. Um, yeah. I mean, it, I, I, it was almost like it was planned. I'm watching this. I'm like, this guy cannot be this dumb. Yeah. You know, he's making all this money. And uh, you know, being the leader of all these kids, and I, you know, got to I, his pr- head. Props man. to the uh, Eric Murdoch, the the assistant who said, "I'm not going to take any more of this." You know, yeah. good for him. Even though he got blackballed, he got fired. 
But, I mean, he, he did, did the, he right, did the right, thing. right thing. Yeah, yeah he did the right, right thing. Sure did. Sure yep. did. Well, I tell you what, that's another edition of The Breakdown. We've had a great time today. Again, yes. thank you, Coach Scott Cooper from Nice High School. Uh, I will say this, if any of you out there watching this have unique questions, anything that you need more information on, if you need some assistance, if you have a, a unique situation that you want to run by us, um, as we have said in the past, Chuck and I know absolutely nothing. So we will <laughs> defer to our advisors and our coaches and our many, many contacts. Uh, no, of course we're kidding. Of course we know all kinds of stuff. But uh, we certainly are here to help. And don't just wait to watch a show or try to get information from the show. If you've got something that you need help on, go to viewmysport.com, click the Contact Us box in the menu, and send your questions over. We will get the answers for you. Believe me, yep. we are here to help. We are here to further the process for you the right way. We're not here to uh, have any type of capital gains from you know uh, your son going on or your daughter going on to college. Uh, matter of fact, as you should know, our service is 100% free. So we are simply here for the betterment of your child. So again, uh, www.viewmysport.com and just click on the contact us and fire your information over and we'll get, we'll get some help for you. So that's it. That's a wrap. Uh, next week, 12 to 1, go to viewmysport.com, the breakdown, and catch next week's show. We don't know who the guest is because we're going to keep it a secret. That's right. We'll, we'll let you know. Thanks for tuning in. And don't forget, enjoy the ride. Enjoy the ride. <laughs>